we're going to go out and we're going to look for the Kamarjuit caribou herd, which is barren ground caribou that are just starting their migration south uh, into the tree line. This is one of the trips that I look forward to most each year. The trip involves flying into Yellowknife and then from Yellowknife taking a two hour charter flight to the east to a place called Enadiah Lake in southern Nunavut. The charter plane that we fly in and uh, when we get to the lodge I think most people are kind of shocked because they look down and they go that's the runway. <laughs> it's just a big uh, dirt strip. The last room we went in there uh, the plane got stuck but it is part of the adventure of being out at this extremely remote wilderness lodge in southern Nunavut. Arctic Haven Lodge is located on the south end of Anadiah Lake and where we're going to look for caribou, we'll be getting in boats and traveling north on the lake into the various arms, particularly the north arm. And as we go north in the boats, we'll actually exit the tree line and get out under the open barrens, into the open tundra. Besides being on the lookout for caribou, we're also going to be watching for grizzly bears, Arctic wolves, and of course for northern lights because we're right in the auroral oval at 62 degrees latitude. This is one of the most physically demanding trips, not only because of all the boat rides that we do, and Enadiah Lake can be quite rough, uh, it can get waves up to two, three, four feet, but it's also because whenever we do encounter caribou, we have to stalk them. And we are once again lodge bound. Uh, we got horrible gale force winds going out. We're just stuck here instead of out looking for caribou. We've had three days of terrible weather so far. We had snow, gusting winds up to 70 kilometers an hour, 45 miles an hour, and uh, we finally have a nice calm day. So we've uh, gotten up at 6.15 in the morning and we're going out for a 14 hour day in search of caribou. It's incredibly hard to sneak around caribou. You have to stay downwind, you have to stay out of sight. Uh, if they're looking up at you and you're in the open, you have to freeze. You can't let them hear you. So really, you know, your senses are firing on all cylinders. I was usually taking the lead and I'd be, you know, just using hand signals and stuff and getting everybody to follow me. And sometimes you got to move really quickly. If the caribou, you know, step behind a little tree and your next tree is 20 meters ahead, you got to get everybody right now. Okay, we're going, let's go. And whoosh, you run as fast as you can up to the next little tree and duck down before the caribou comes out in the far side of the trees it's behind. We had a lot of stalks that weren't successful at all, where we didn't get any shots, but uh, that's part of the fun. That was, uh, that went almost too well. We got uh, so close to the caribou we couldn't fit them in. We did have one remarkably close encounter uh, where we actually got too close three big bulls and three younger bulls, and uh, they ended up coming within about 40 feet of us. Uh, I had my big lens on and I was too close to even take photos. I've, I took what I could, but I've mostly got just heads and antlers. Obviously not the greatest for photography, but it was very exciting for myself and for the group. Uh, sometimes with the wind chill, it was down to minus 10, and when you're out there hour after hour after hour, sitting in a boat, just taking that cold air, uh, it really starts to soak into your bones, so uh, we would often at lunch uh, get a little fire going on the tundra and uh, warm ourselves up, dry off our gloves. Uh, fire was a bit of a necessity on a couple of those days. The first caribou that we saw was a, a small group of two uh, bulls, and one of the bulls had all of his velvet uh, falling off, so his antlers were all bright red. Just spotted uh, our big bull that we've been following. Uh, we've had a couple shoots with it already and it is now swimming across the water. So we're gonna whiz over and uh, try and get in. We don't wanna get too close and scare it, but we uh, should have a really good opportunity here. So we just had our encounter with this uh, bull. It's got his velvet falling off and he's got his beautiful red antlers swimming across the uh, channel here in front of us. And just some amazing shots. Uh, I think everybody is very happy right now.
So on our fourth day, uh, we got a nice, calm, clear day, our only one, and we zipped way far north. And we got up into these little islands, and uh, on one small island, uh, one of our participants spotted a lone bull caribou. But we very quickly noticed that it was a very, very unique caribou. First of all, it was a gigantic bull, uh, which is not all that common. And second, it had a very atypical rack. It did not have a double shovel, it just had a single shovel, and then it had all these crazy little nodules branching off of its antlers, and gigantic set of big antlers still clad in velvet. Twelve hundred shots of them. Our beautiful atypical guy that uh, the two women aboard have named Alfred. Gorgeous big bull. Looks like he's got a bit of an injury on his back right leg, so that's why he's hanging out on this island. Probably got attacked by wolves at some point, and uh, now he's found himself a little refuge, and we found him on his little refuge, so. On the evening of our fourth day, we finally had clear skies and uh, were able to get out and do some aurora at night. It started really early. By nine o'clock, there was already little flashes of green starting to go in the sky. The best uh, aurora was probably right at about uh, midnight. Um, in fact, one of the guys decided, you know what, if this hasn't been too strong, I'm gonna go to bed. He went to bed at midnight, and I have a photo from 12.01 uh, that was my favorite of all night. Uh, so uh, he went to bed just a couple minutes early. He should have stayed out, Don. <laughs> uh, we had absolutely spectacular tundra colors. Um, the dwarf birch and the willow was just off the charts with the reds and oranges and yellows. Uh, absolutely stunning. So obviously one of the biggest reasons that I take a group up to Anadia Lake is uh, not just the Northern Lights and the Tundra Colors, but the Barren Ground Caribou. And it's the Kamarjuit Barren Ground Caribou herd that we're actually after. And it's, it's one of the largest Barren Ground herds left in Canada. Uh, it's about 350,000 strong as of the last census in 2008. Now it's interesting with this herd being 350,000 strong, you would think that you'd get in the boats and you'd go 80 kilometers up the lake and you'd see 100,000. But uh, this 350,000 caribou is spread out over an absolutely enormous area, about the size of a quarter of British Columbia. But this is a herd that actually has seen pretty significant decline. Like most barren ground caribou herds in Northern Canada, uh, almost all of them are in decline right now. And the finger is being pointed pretty squarely at overhunting. Uh, the Camarjuet herd alone in certain years has had as much as 25,000 caribou harvested by humans. It's our final day out looking for caribou in the barren lands and uh, it's freezing cold and it's windy and it's cloudy and there's no better place on earth to be. Uh, I would much rather spend a day here in the north looking for caribou than back in the office in Camor. This is just, this is as good as it gets cruising around doing this. Anytime. Oh, do you want me to say something? Yeah, okay. <laughs>